Hello everyone. It's Wednesday and you know what time it is. It's stream time. Today we're going to be creating cities with the watercolor city style. Cities can seem incredibly overwhelming and intimidating because of the sheer scale of the project. So in this stream, we're going to be focusing on a process that's going to make it so much easier and quicker to make cities. Rome wasn't created in a day, hence you're not going to be able to make a whole city, especially a massive one, in one hour. So what we're going to focus on again is process, and that with this process you can create any size city you want, from a village all the way up to a capital. It doesn't matter. Process is everything. I don't have any announcements, so let's not waste any time. You're going to want to clone and edit this map right here. If you're watching live, you'll find that in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll find that in the video description. Hey, Cutman, what's up? Musical Rogue, Philip, welcome everybody. So glad that you are all here. So go ahead and clone and edit this map if you want to follow along in the stream. We're going to make, I'm going to show you how to do the process with city building. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump in, okay? So with cities, it, again, I had mentioned that it just is incredibly intimidating, the sheer scale of city planning. So coming up with a process is going to help to make it simpler. It's going to simplify the whole process. It's going to make it go by quicker, and it's going to make it easier. So all of these things are going to help us out. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. Let's go ahead and start with the process of it all, okay? When you're doing the thing, the process is really going to help you. So first, we're going to set scale. Now there's multiple ways that you can set scale or scale rules. And for me, I'm going to be using instead of square feet to determine scale, I'm going to be using population. Okay. So if you want to decide how large a city is or what the scale of a stamp is, you first need to determine the population. Hey, first time chatter. So glad that you're here. Welcome. We're going to be doing cities. So let's go with that process. So first scale, and we're not going to do, be using uh, distances. We're going to be using population to determine that scale. We're going to do terrain, city limits or walls, the thoroughfares, arteries, walls, access, centerpieces, old town, districts, residential, and farmland. Okay. Now with this process, you might, some, some of the steps can be out of order. And if you get tired or get bored with a certain step, like if you get tired of doing, working on old town, you can step back to access or step back to arteries. So that's the beauty of the process is you don't have to follow it step by step perfectly. You can always go back to previous steps and that way you're not getting bored because that will absolutely happen. When you're making large swaths of residential blocks, it's going to be a monotonous project of process of putting together these blocks. So when you get tired of one step, you can just go back to another. So, and it's a great way to make sure that you get the map done without losing interest. And it's so easy to do that. I usually get bored within about 20 to 30 minutes of working on a map. You will too. It just happens. So th this process is going to help to deal with the boredom, the monotony, and it's going to make sure that the map gets done in a short, shorter period of time. Instead of your eight hours or 10 hours, it'll take four or five, hopefully. Now that we've determined the first step, scale, let's go ahead and decide how, what our population is going to be, okay? What I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be doing is how many people per structure or per per household. You can set this number to whatever that you want it to be. I'm going to set it to five people per household, but you don't have to do that. You could do 13, 10, 15, whatever it is. If you are wanting to make a larger city, a mar larger, larger city, you're clearly going to want to drop the scale of a stamp down, right? So this is what a scale is at 100% right here. Now, the problem with that is that if you wanted to make a city with a million people, that would be very, 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 it would be a pretty large building. You're not going to be able to fit a million plus probably residents in a building at 100% scale. What we're going to be using for this particular map is a scale of 50. So half of 100% at 50. And this will allow us to make sure that there's enough houses or enough residences on there to reach that population quota, whatever it might be. So with about 50%, you're going to be getting buildings, you're going to be getting city sizes around about 10 to 25,000. If you wanted to hit closer to around 500,000 to a million, you're going to drop the scale maybe to 25 or 15%. Okay. 
But for this stream, we're going to be making a city to about 20k, and it's only going to be five people per household. Again, you can change that to whatever you want, okay? All right, now that we've set that scale, we'll go ahead and turn that away. Let's go back to our process. We've set our scale, 50%. Let's go ahead and do the terrain layout. What's really important with cities is it's hard to know the whole city layout and planning unless you take the terrain into account first. So first thing with terrain is you're going to notice is, is its availability or its accessibility to water and food sources. So if you want to make really interesting terrain for your city, think about rivers, lakes, the ocean, coastal city. Think about its proximity to water. That's going to be both important for drinking and for fishing for a food source. So if you want to have a more dynamic terrain for your city, remember to include water sources. That's going to be super important. If you're out in the desert, make sure there's lots of wells, okay? That way you know that there's accessibility to water because without water, no way that any kind of civilization is going to survive without it, okay? Let's go do into our landscape layer. Whenever I'm putting together a layout using the path tool for whatever I'm making, I like to come up with some kind of blueprint. And when you're making your blueprint, you don't, sometimes you don't know where to start, right? So the first step is to throw down that water source. All I did was just take a blue path and created the bend of a river, okay? Because that way we have accessibility to water. You're going to end up filling the entire screen or canvas with the add mode of the mask tool and then carve out that river shape where that path tool is. Now I made this with a drawing pen, but if you are using a mouse, it works just as just as fine just fine because don't worry about making it perfect okay you're just using the path layout as just a guide okay don't worry about making it perfect you're going to get stuck in the layout process if you're trying to make everything perfect just create a rough draft outline after you've created that the river or the water source, ocean, river, lake, or whatever, you're going to make the terrestrial part, the land part and land is a great way to create elevation or depth because that's going to give a more visually appealing, a more dynamic feel to the terrain. So if you want the city to have multiple tiers, let's say you want the slums to be based on the ground floor or the ground while upper, maybe elite, merchant class, middle class, whatever it might be within your world will be higher up onto that terrain part. Once you've created the larger cliffs, which is made by my large white thick lines, you're going to create a smaller cliffs to give it a more natural feel to it. Putting together those natural cliff parts is not complex. Notice the dashed lines and how they're connected on certain parts wherever there's a bump. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick and you'll notice right here that I've kind of created this little bump right here and I've just use that bump to determine where I'm going to add another cliff. So you're using using that to determine the different kinds of depths on your cliff. Once you've put that all together, now that you've had that layout, next we're going to want to come up with a city planning part. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. K Queen or Q Queen Charlie. Awesome. We love hearing that. I'll make sure to pass that on to the developers and the rest of the team. So thank you so much. Really, really glad to have you here, by the way. Once you've figured out the terrain part, right? We've put the whole terrain part down. Now we can go back to our process. Check, that's done. We're gonna go to city limits or our city layout. Okay, so what we're gonna go to our city layout. And one of the first things you wanna do is to create the city limits or where the wall is going to be the city now if you if you don't want to add a wall to your city that's fine it's just going to be an open city without a wall or a defensive wall or curtain wall to protect the city that's fine it can just be your city limits so i've used that red path to basically create the city limits so all of the residential all the districts are going to be within that red area right there okay Okay, so you have those city limits. The next thing is going to be super, super important is access. And when I mean access, I mean 
roads. Roads are super important and they can be incredibly confusing for a lot of people because you don't know how to create a road structure. Road structure is actually way less complex than you think. The secret to it is access to what? Where does that road lead to? Okay. And with most cities, it's going to be access for military or the constabulary or the police or a prefecture, whatever is going to be in charge of your police work or it's going to be in charge of domestic disturbances. That's going to be basically that's going to allow the most access, mostly military. Okay. So first you're going to create a main thoroughway or main carriageway. Okay. That main carriageway is basically a thoroughfare or road that's going to lead to the most important or the centerpiece of your capital. And that can be whatever you want. Okay. All right. So right here, this right here is going to be where our elites, this could be anything you want. Castle, an elite, a district. It could be a cathedral. It could be a temple district, whatever you want that centerpiece to be. You notice that that road leads directly to that part. All of the roads or arteries are going to branch off that road. A modern equivalent would be, for example, Main Street or Broadway. In your normal city, whatever town or city you live in, Main Street or Broadway are generally going to be that central thoroughfare that all of the routes branch off of, right? Hey, first time chatter. So glad that you're here, Burabelg. Awesome. Great. Love seeing new faces. After you've created that main thoroughway, you don't have to worry about making the branching arteries yet. What you want to do is start creating your districts. And you're just going to use the path tool to kind of show where each district is. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right. And now when it comes to districts, my suggestion is, is to come up with ones that make sense to the city. So for instance, Let's do some ones that are really simple. For instance, you're going to want to have infrastructure, right? It would be weird if you didn't have any kind of infrastructure on your, th on your city. You see that infrastructure is going to be that center square right there. There's going to be a gladiatorial district where you might have gladiatorial games, where you might have maybe a hippodrome or a coliseum. You're also going to have a military district. Again, it doesn't have to be military. It could be whatever you want, a constabulary, a prefecture, whatever it is you want. It's totally up to you to decide. There's going to be a slums where our lower class or caste people will be living. There's going to be an education where maybe an academy or a citadel, a school, whatever it is you want it to be, some kind of education section. And it's placed clearly where the merchant and elite class is, where they can afford that education. So I'm putting it in that district. There's also that merchant district where wealthy merchants might live. There's also going to be an administrative district. It only makes sense when you have a large city and there's lots of people to kind of take care of with the social services, the infrastructure, there's going to need administration. Though they're going to be in charge of taking care of all the services, the general maintenance and stuff like that. So having an administration district is going to be important. You're going to have your elite district, which I put in gold here. This is going to be, again, where your centerpiece is going to be. Again, you can put whatever you want in that centerpiece. We're going to have a temple district where we're going to have maybe a large cathedral or a large temple. And of course, housing for the priests, acolytes that might live in that area as well. So they're close to wherever their workplace is, the temple. There's going to be a mage district. It's always nice to have a section in your city where maybe the mages live, where maybe there's a citadel, a mages college, whatever. Nice to have a little bit of a mage there. Everything else that isn't labeled is going to be residential. So all this stuff in here is all going to be residential. And I recommend that you do residential last because residential is so monotonously boring. You're going to be creating so many block spaces and it takes up the most space in your city. So we'll save that for last. And of course, I'll come up with a method that will be making blocks so much easier. So we'll go through that process. Okay. Once you've done that, you can start to put down your arteries because now you know where your districts are. It will be easier to make your branching, branching arteries. One thing that I recommend is that you're going to have more branching arteries in 
the in the residential area than you would in the slums because the slums has less infrastructure because it's an impoverished part of the city so just have less roads and don't have to make them paved you're going to end up just making them dirt okay but when it comes to where your military is, you're going to have a lot of different roads and arteries because that military needs access to fortified sections of the wall, all sections of the wall. If there's a bastion or a fortified tower up against the wall, they're going to need access to that. They're going to need access to the gatehouse. They're going to need access to any portion of the wall, and they're going to need quick access to move quickly to the merchant and elite districts if they need to protect those districts by going straight to the thoroughfare. So really, block structure is determined by roads. You wouldn't create a block first and then put down the road. You would build the road first. Now, what's also really important about roads is that you don't have to have a road planned out for every single block. What's really interesting is that the road system is going to change as you place down blocks. And in a historical sense, this makes sense. Cities are built through what's called accretion, okay? And accretion is when cities slowly build up in size over time. I'm going to be showing you how to create the city to make it look like it's built over time instead of a city that's built maybe just over 10 years over a really block format. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, well, we've got a lot to cover, so let's not waste any time, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just take every single one of these. I'm going to bring the, let's go ahead and bring the opacity down. I'm going to select every single one of them. I'm going to turn this off for now. And we're going to get into the terrain section. Let's go ahead and open that up and get started. I'm going to turn off this yellow rug. And you're going to see that I've already put together all the texturing and all the land and stuff like that. So just to, I'm going to go ahead and review how this was made. Remember, you fill the entire canvas with the add mode of the mask tool, and then you will take the subtract mode of the mask tool, use a circular brush, and the trick is to just use a brush that's wide enough that's going to create the entire size of the river, and then just take your mouse and go down. And it's okay if you make errors, if you flinch, and whatever that's okay the objective is not to make everything perfect on the first pass when you're doing something you'll do your refining your details fixing up the edges of the rivers and all your landscape near the end because if you focus on making everything finesse and nice at the start you'll get yourself into like a bottleneck or a kind of a detailed frenzy in which you won't be able to move on to the next step so save all of your nitpicking all of your attention to detail for the later stages so that that way you won't get caught up in one of the stages of the process, okay? Hey, first time chatter, Russian oatmeal. I've seen you on our Discord. Welcome, so glad that you are here, okay? All right. So as you can notice, I've went ahead and used that path tool to kind of create that terrain. Let me go ahead and turn off or bring some of that landscape terrain stuff down. I'm going to select it all and bring the opacity down. There we go. And next we're going to throw on our cliffs. So we're going to work on terrain. Terrain doesn't take too long. It's pretty easy. Open up the terrain thing. You'll start with your with the base structure first. Okay. I'll go ahead and turn this on right here. Let me go ahead and make sure I got the terrain turned on. There we go. There we are. Notice carefully that I've created the cliffs and they line up along the path just fine. And what the secret to this is just to piece, rotate and piece each one together. Once we get the room tool, this method will be irrelevant. But for the time being, you'll just piece each wall piece or each wall or terrain piece that you're using together to create the basic shape. And it doesn't have to line up perfectly with the path. Don't worry about that. It's just a guide to help you with the general shape of the terrain, right? Now that we've got all that put down, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off my landscape layout. The landscape has already been completed, and so we'll turn that off. You'll notice that all the terrain is set up. The next step is to go ahead and after terrain, let me look at the process here real quick. Let's pull that up. It's always nice to see what's left in our process. We've done the city limits, we've done the thoroughfare, we've done arteries. Next is gonna go ahead and put down our walls. 
Remember where our city limits are? Let's go ahead and put down walls here. We've already got terrain down. Let's go ahead and put down our walls and access. Okay, those are gonna be super important. When I say access, I'm meaning like the gatehouse that leads into the city, any bridges that cross bodies of water, any staircases that might lead up to different tiers of the city. That's all going to be your access. So let me first put down our first wall. And the first wall is going to be your outer wall, or what's referred to as your curtain wall. That wall goes all the way around the entire city. That way it's encompassing the city, framing the city, and protecting it. So that's going to be your defense, right? It's nice to put up the city, the wall first, because the wall will give you the city limits, knowing the sheer size of the city. It will tell you the limits so you know where the city is going to end. And two, only makes sense because if you don't want attackers to attack your city while you're building it, it's nice to have walls to defend that against. After you've added that, you're going to add in your, your middle wall. That wall is going to surround the middle class section, as you can see right here. And I also you want to notice very carefully just where my city access is. Notice that my towers all have access points to reach those defensive positions. If you want military, constabulary, whatever it is that's defending your city, they need access to these defensive positions. So notice that all the roads lead very carefully to each one of these fortified towers. Okay, with a, a, a siege is going to occur, the defenders need access to the wall so that that way they can get to it and do those defenses. Notice also that there are roads that lines all the way around the wall so that soldiers or whoever's defending the city has access to the entire surround, the entire wall. So that way, if they need to defend specific sections, they can gather there and defend it. So super important. That's really the secret to roads. It's all about access to whatever's most important, okay? Let's go ahead and delete that. Next, we're going to throw in some defenses for the river. So we'll throw in some fortified towers that are going to be along the river. Notice that they also have access through our roads here. Notice here that there's access to these fortified positions. Just in case some wandering ship might want to come by and attack, there's going to be defensive positions to defend against those attackers. So defenses is a big deal. Okay, and making a wall is not, it's not as hard as you think. Look carefully, what I'll, excuse me, all I did was go ahead and take one wall piece and I took the longest wall piece on purpose. And all I did was take that one long piece like that, copy, paste, and just rotate it a little bit. Copy, paste, rotate it a little bit. That's how you put together your walls. It's really as simple as that. Use the longer pieces because it will take longer if you use the shorter pieces. So use the longer wall pieces so that making the wall will be easier and quicker. Personally, this wall didn't take more than about five to 10 minutes to create. So if you use the longer pieces, it just goes by so much quicker. Give yourself less work by using the longer pieces, okay? All right, now that we've kind of put together our walls, we can start focusing on the other parts. Let's go ahead and start, talk a little bit about block creation and how it's formed. Most cities are started out as smaller towns and then through the process of accretion, accretion or accretion got larger, okay? Normally when you do a city and you're starting out that city, you're gonna start with a simple square or rectangular block structure, okay? And that's, but as time goes by and the city expands, it will break away from that block structure and create more organic or more interesting and unique block shapes. Okay. So in other words, we're going to create old town, which is just simply means the original town that was built and constructed here while the rest of the city was built around that town. Okay. And that's going to give it a much more organic and interesting look. If it was just pure blocks, the entire city was nothing but perfectly square blocks. That city would look, it wouldn't look like a lot of the cities in Europe where they've built up over time through accretion. Okay. 
So the old town is going to consist as our economic hub or center. It's going to be where our markets are going to be. It's going to be where our infrastructure, our guilds, and where the market owners are going to live. Let's start with that first one where the market district is. In the center of where these two major thoroughways, you're going to have that market. This is where people are going to go. And I would recommend you put the market in the center of the town or AKA center of the town. It's going to be your economic hub or center of commerce. That's going to be really important. Okay. After you've put together that, that markets, start putting together some of the larger guilds to frame around that market. Okay. And of course, this is where your larger guilds are going to be. They want to be in the economic center or the commerce center or commercial center because they want access to where all the shops are, patrons, customers. So when you're building your city center or old town, put those guilds in there. After you've put in the guilds, you're going to, of course, going to want to put in infrastructure. When people walk into the city, when they walk into the city, one of the first things that they're going to want to bump into is access to goods and services, right? That's why I've put the city, that's why I've put the important parts of the city right here where the infrastructure and the guilds are, okay? There's going to supposed to be a gatehouse where that gap is right there. So don't worry about that, all right? Don't look at that. So when you're building your town center, there is a spe specific pack that you're going to find most useful in the catalog and it's going to be called special buildings okay special buildings are going to have all are going to have all of the interesting kind of guild buildings that you're looking for let's open up this pack expand all stamp sets you're going to see there's a whole bunch of goodies in here let's also show that name so that you can see uh so that you can see what each thing is Inside this special buildings pack, you're going to find fisheries, inns, leather workers, libraries, room workers, lighthouses, everything that you need to create a district, whether it's Old Town District, the commercial center, or whether it's the gladiatorial district, or whether it's going to be your um, military district. A lot of your special buildings are going to be in this pack. So when it comes to making those kind of districts, immediately type in special buildings or go into that left side and click special buildings. Special buildings is going to be super part. Hey, raid party. Hey, fumble folks. So glad. Thank you so much. Exciting stuff. Yes, you can absolutely expand uh, packs. That's super important. So make sure that you do that. Check out these awesome um, special buildings. You're going to place these first. Okay, before you make your expansive residential areas with all its blocks. So it's a good step. If you start with residential first, it's going to be monotonous and boring. So I recommend you start with your specialty buildings and, the, and all your districts first, and then you can build your residential around those districts. So notice carefully what we have in these districts. Notice carefully what's in this commercial hub right here. You're going to see that there's some inns right here. We'll put two inns so that they're competing with each other for patrons. Notice that there's a smithy or a forge. Notice here that you also have a herbalist, a brewery next to each other. Because it's a inn slash tavern, it only makes sense that the brewery and the herbalist would be close to the tavern and inn since they're going to be work the herbalist and the brewery are going to be working together to create some delicious micro brews. Mm. Okay. So, Hey, it only makes sense to put the inn or the tavern next to the herbalist and the brewery. So when you're placing your districts, think about proximity to what's in that area. If you have a tavern at a brewery, right? If you have a carpenter, put the Mason next to them, right? We have another competing blacksmith right here. We have another mason shop right here or a stone worker. So add in those structures. From there, once you've added in those, once you've added in the infrastructure, the guilds and the markets, you'll throw in the market owners. Someone has to own and work at these locations, right? So you're going to have to put in some larger properties and maybe some smaller properties that might be, um, where your 
maybe a journeyman might work. The way that you show larger properties is not complex. All you really need to do is make a little bit of grass to show that it's a property, right? The wealthier you are, the more money you have to buy property. So just throwing a little bit of green into a fenced area can represent a larger estate or manor house or a larger property. For those of you, for those who don't have a lot of money, just throw in a smaller building to kind of represent that they just live either in an apartment or a smaller house that doesn't have a lawn, a yard, or property. So that's what's very, very helpful. If you want to denote larger property, simply throw in a fenced in yard area. So now that you have both the market, the guilds that will be benefiting from the market space, those guild owners and the infrastructure. This is gonna be your old town. That's why it's in a block. In a modern equivalent of this would be considered downtown, okay? You can consider it that. Consider it downtown as a modern equivalent. Once you finish that downtown, that blocky area, once you finish that, then you can move on to that next step, which is putting in all of those districts. Districts are super important. Or you can also, if you want, you don't want to do districts right away. You can do with center pieces. This piece right here, what's really nice with center pieces is, is that your city can look really clustered with all the different buildings. The way to give your viewer or the users a little bit of a, give their eye a rest from the busyness of a town is to throw in larger central pieces where they can look and just explore that larger piece. Think of it as a rest for your eye. You'll notice that there's one there and there's another one right here for our gladiatorial district. Okay. So these areas right here are going to be a rest for the eye. Okay. So important that we, we do that. Let's go through what kind of centerpieces that you can use. There's a lot of different options you can choose from. You could use the full on castle from the Gothic horror pack to fill up that entire space. If you want, it's a lord, a lordly manor castle, and they're the ones that control the city. You can add that, that's fine. If you don't want to have a castle, maybe you wanna create a golden palace with our modular style. So you have like this palace format with some nice trees, and you'll be using platforms to create this nice tiered level type of area. So you could create a golden palace if you wanted to. If you didn't want to use a golden palace, you could create like a glass dome, perhaps with some outbuildings. Remember, if you're not curious, if you're curious how to create modular compos compositions, go check out the how to create modular building stream on our YouTube channel. That will totally help you. Okay. If you don't want to create a glass dome, if you want something else, maybe this is where the main religious center is, then you, maybe you want to create a religious complex, create a large cathedral, and then make some smaller temples and shrines, as well as buildings like a, a rectory for your priests or a domiciles for your acolytes or whatever. So whenever you're putting together a kind of complex like this, create your large structure, temple, palace, whatever, and then your outbuildings or ancillary buildings like your domiciles, rectory, temples, shrines, monasteries, whatever, okay? I personally like the golden dome or the glass dome, so we're going to use that as our centerpiece, okay? Let's go ahead and do districts. And when we're doing our districts, we're going to focus on the larger buildings first, right? If you start with the larger buildings first, it takes up more space, making it easier to fill in the other negative space around it. So large buildings are useful. Let's start with the gladiatorial district. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just turn on the entire gladiatorial district. And let's go ahead and zoom in, take a look and see what we've put together here. This is basically going to be what we would consider in Rome a a, a hippodrome. It could be a racetrack. It could be whatever you want. You could put a coliseum there. It doesn't matter. Whatever the large piece is, it can be whatever you want. You can put the cathedral there if you want or whatever. But for the gladiatorial, we're going to use that hippodrome as our main centerpiece of the district. And you'll notice that a lot of access goes from the gladiatorial district into, of course, all the different towers and city 
Okay, so remember, roads, it's all about access, okay? Let's talk about the other buildings that are gonna be in that district. And we'll construct an entire district or a block by hand so you can see how I made each one of these blocks. Notice here that we also have what are referred to in, in ancient Rome as a ludus. It's basically gonna be a gladiatorial school. And you can have maybe one of the larger gladiatorial schools right here and maybe a competing smaller gladiatorial school right here. You can throw in as many gladiatorial schools as you want. All I used was just the big and small fighters guild, which kind of makes sense because it's a gladiatorial district. When you're making those gladiatorial schools, don't forget to create a yard or a fenced in section where your gladiators, fighters, warriors, whatever, are going to be practicing, training, whatever it might be, okay? And then on top of that, make sure you throw in some infrastructure. When it comes to all the weapons that the guilds are, that these fighter guilds are gonna be using, you need a blacksmith. On top of that, you need the ludus owners and the staff that work there, give them residence as well, okay? So when you're making a district, the central piece, add in the necessary infrastructure and whatever building that pertains to that district. If this was a temple district, then you'd add in obviously some shrines, temples, a rectory, whatever it might be, okay? So just focus on the centerpiece and then build the necessary infrastructure and residences that are in charge of those buildings, okay? Let's go ahead and finish that up. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and throw in our military district. Our military district is going to be super duper important. So let's go ahead and open that up. With the military district, I start with really, no, there's not really one that's larger than the other, but there's a lot of custom buildings in here that kind of make up your military. Again, it doesn't have to be military. It can be a constabulary, a prefecture, police, whatever it might be. Let's go over what's in that military district. There's gonna be quite a few things. The most noticeable thing, of course, is gonna be your barracks. Your barracks are where soldiers or your warriors or fighters are gonna be staying, okay? That's where they live, that's their domiciles. And there's even a training yard right here for soldiers to practice, do their drills and stuff like that. What else are you gonna see in a military district? You're gonna find an archery range for archers to practice with their shooting. You'll also notice that there is a foundry right here. I've used an alchemist and I've used this as kind of like a cannon foundry where maybe gunpowder or maybe it's a siege workshop or whatever it might be. But this foundry right here is where the necessary chemicals are gonna be used for either your smithing, for your gunpowder, whatever. You're also gonna notice that I made a siege workshop that's gonna show where the siege equipment is gonna be so wherever your catapults, try, try, your catapults or whatever the siege equipment, they're gonna be constructed in this area. What else would you expect in a military district? You would expect a military academy. It can be like an officer's academy where officers go to get special, special training and for them to kind of graduate and move up to the officer, move up in the officer corps, okay? On top of that, you're gonna need some other things as well. We're gonna need a, a shipyard for our Navy. And of course, all the different buildings right here. And I've just made them blue to show that these are naval buildings. So I've made them a similar color. I've used blue. These are all gonna be for sailors, sailor off officer corps buildings. It's gonna be for retirees. It's gonna be for officers. Maybe the Admiral's mansion is gonna be here. All the various, necessary infrastructure buildings that are necessary, you wanna put into that district, okay? So putting it, again, putting together a district is not complex. You just need to figure out what things are gonna be in that district. If it's military, think of all the various buildings that you'd need to have a functioning military, okay? After we finish military, let's go ahead and do, move away from this area, go to a different part of the map. If you get tired of one area, you can always move on to another. Let's do our temple district. As with all the districts, if there's a centerpiece or a large piece, looks like that terrain is, <laughs> I accidentally put that below, but let's go ahead and move the terrain down, my mistake. <laughs> we'll push the terrain all the way down. There we go. One thing you're gonna notice about 
again is start with the largest piece first. Notice that this large temple is here. So I've went ahead and created a temple. That's that center piece. Remember, start large, and then that larger fills up the larger amount of space. And then you can think about all the ancillary buildings. So I've got here, maybe this is where the head, the high priest lives. Maybe the acolytes live in this structure. You're gonna have maybe where, uh, this is gonna be where the incense is maybe created, maybe where the holy water is put together, Whatever it might be, you want some buildings that are going to manufacture the stuff that's needed for spiritual uh, resources and stuff like that. So it's going to be super important. We've got a large, a larger temple here, and maybe uh, you're going to have some maintenance that's going to be in charge of taking care of cleaning the facility um, and stuff like that. Just general maintenance, and then maybe a house for that general maintenance offices. So where those employees or those workers kind of live. So think about you know, ancillary buildings are going to be what is necessary for uh, the what's going to be necessary for the uh, for this area or for this district to operate properly. Okay. All right. Let's take a step back. We still have a lot to cover and we're running out of time here. So let's go ahead and put down the other blocks, and then I'm going to put together a block so that you can see how the process of doing blocks. Let's go ahead and go back to districts. Let's go ahead and work on the next one. We're gonna put in our merchant quarter. And I want you to notice that that middle class tier has a lot of grass. Notice that there is a lot of open space, lots of grass. It's not as densely populated. It's because this area is wealthier. They have more money and therefore more property. So the way to show a wealthier area is to add more grass. Okay. Make larger open spaces, throw in parks. Those kind of things are going to show that an area has wealth. It would be the opposite for a slum. If you were making a slum, you would clearly have much more densely populated, less infra less developed infrastructure that kind of stuff like that. So let me show you a couple components here. Notice that an infrastructure has been included and notice that the infrastructure is different. I've added a jeweler and a rune smith. This is different from your other infrastructure buildings in the old town. This is These are more um, finely tuned crafts. So a rune smith kind of makes sense to put them in a more richer area. A jeweler, jewelry, jewels are expensive. They're not generally going to be affordable to, you know, the poor masses. So put it, your jeweler, put your runesmith, put your theaters, opera houses, put those in your more wealthier areas. And that will determine the wealth of an area. Because sometimes you're not sure, how do I determine an elite section to a middle class section to a lower class? It's all about property and about access to infrastructure and different types of infrastructure. So that's gonna be super duper important. Let's keep going. We have a lot to cover still. Let's go ahead and do our administrative. And our administrative stuff is going to be, of course, like your parliament, maybe your town hall, or your courthouses, wherever it might be. You can create an entire complex to kind of help you when making it. So this whole blue structure right here is going to be like a mix between parliament, your town hall, and your courthouse system. So all of that is going to be incorporated in this complex that you see right here. And of course, whenever you're making a complex, it's always helpful to use foundation to separate it from the other residential areas. Okay. So using that platform stamp is ridiculously important. On top of this, of course, you want to create where are the employees, where are the, the judges, where are the administrators, where are the senators, or wherever, where are they going to live, right? They're going to live in these buildings that are going to be around that administrative complex, okay? All right. Let's keep going. We have, still have so much to cover. We're going to go next with our university district. We're just going to kind of fill in the entire large section right here and just kind of get that over with. So we'll open up a university district. And this university district is going to have a couple things. You're going to have a university. Remember those special, remember those special buildings pack? 
That's where you're going to find this university right here. Perfect. You would expect education to be accessible to those who could afford it in this area. And then there's also a library right here. Kind of makes sense. Campuses have libraries, so they're going to need a library. And of course, they're going to need dormitories for student housing. And of course, they're going to need housing for faculty, teachers, staff. So think about that when you're making your complex areas. Remember, the main structures, the university and the library, and then the ancillary buildings, which support those larger buildings, right? So putting together a district is as simple as that. Larger buildings, ancillary buildings, and then throw in your grass, maybe a lawn. You don't forget to use your foundations. So making a district is not as complex or as difficult as you think when you follow the process. Let's go ahead and make a mage district. And I'm gonna make this district different I'm going to use different whenever you're trying to determine a different district from another district change the color of the buildings so instead of using red which you'll see there's a lot of red here i've used a lot of red buildings maybe go with a different color just like i use the blue to kind of represent that naval academy naval section you can use a different color to represent a different part of the district so i'll go ahead and make this whole district visible and I've used blue with a little bit of purple in there. It's nice to throw in various colors of your roofing to show that there are different districts. And again, start with the central, remember the centerpiece. The centerpiece is going to be this mage academy right here. And it's gonna be higher up to show that it's an important part of the district. So I put it up on top of that landscape there. So we've got a nice big mages guild remember in your special buildings a small mage guild with a tower or citadel to represent the citadel tower and i've used an alchemist here as well to kind of show that mages to you it's another uh, school of thought within the magic system is alchemy learning how to make precious metals or precious runes or whatever so using that alchemist in that district will be important after you've done that centerpiece of course you're going to want to create the residential part of that district where a lot of people are going to be living so maybe your uh, maybe the mages live in this area where the acolytes trainees mages in training students of the academy of that mage academy there we're all going to be living in that section okay all right let's go ahead and do the remaining districts and then we're going to manually put together a a block so that you can figure out how to put blocks together because i know that bl making blocks can be incredibly intimidating and frustrating so let's just put in the rest of the districts and then we'll finish up that resident stuff. So next we're gonna do a fisherman's market. And I'm gonna put the fisherman's market, of course, where would you expect? Right up against the river, right here. Let's zoom in so you can see what's going on here. We just released the modular pack for watercolor city. So we have these excellent long dock pieces that can be pieced together just like I pieced together the walls to create this long boardwalk or dock area to where boats can, Go ahead and dock and really go ahead and put their fish their catches for the day and go ahead and have market stalls as well all along that road area so it looks like there's a market there so a fisher or fisherman's market is going to be important and notice that i put my boats on there as well so now we have a nice fisherman's market let's go ahead and throw in now our larger residential and when you're putting together your residential, it's not hard. All you have to do is just put together inside of these negative spaces where you've created your blocks. You're going to go ahead and fill in that block with a variety of stamp pieces. And of course, when you're putting together your block, you're going to use larger pieces first and then fill in the negative space with smaller spaces. Notice that there's a, the operation, the process is the same. If you're making a block you start with the larger pieces and then fill in the larger the other negative space with smaller with smaller pieces so making a block construction is not as complex as you think so let's go ahead and put down our southwest region and then i'll put in our southeast region 
And then we'll also throw in our slums as well. And I've left a, a space down here at the bottom, as you can see, it's open right here. And we're gonna use this space to construct a block, okay? I think there's also a couple more things that need to be added as well. Let's make sure that I throw in our, let me see where our, um, I'm not sure where our gatehouse went. I thought we had a gatehouse. I'm not sure what happened to that. Let me check. Ah, there's our gatehouse right there. I think I might have missed that. We'll zoom in carefully so you can see the gatehouse right here. We've added the gatehouse. One thing I want you to notice about the gatehouse, by the way, is there's a lot of open space right here. This is super important. This open space right here is referred to as like a place of arms. It's a place where soldiers can gather together. It's a staging area where they can gather together and then man certain posts of the gatehouse. I meant to show this a little bit earlier in the stream, but I just got, got lost, and so I apologize. But that open negative space right there is very important. I didn't leave it blank by accident. It's, again, a staging area where soldiers can go from any part of the city and gather at the gatehouse to man the position, the defensive positions there. So it's super important to remember, leave some open space for a place of arms so that your defenders have a place where they can come mobilize together and then go to the different defensive positions. Remember, that's what roads are all about is access. Don't ever forget, if you're ever confused, access about what your road system is, it's all about access, okay? Look carefully, again, Look at this main artery right here that goes, branches off the main thoroughway and goes to that citadel, right? Notice that the military section all has quick access that can get to the gate. If there are military troops positioned over here, they can quickly move to the gatehouse, okay? Remember, roads is all about access, and that's going to be one of the largest steps, okay? We've got about nine, ten minutes left. We still have a lot more to cover, so let's quickly get that stuff started, okay? Let's go ahead and make a block, just so you can see how I put this together. There's gonna be some really important things. Whenever you're putting together an awkward shape block, it's best to do the frame, the framing first around the area. And I'm gonna show you a couple stamps that are gonna be super duper helpful when putting that framing together. Let's go ahead and go back to watercolor cities here. And I'm gonna show you some buildings that are gonna be extremely helpful when putting these odd shapes. Easily putting together a block, a square block, is gonna be super duper easy. But what about a weird angled block that's got some strange 90, or not 90 degree angles, but different kind of angles? How do we put that together? I'm gonna to be showing you that trick, and it's gonna be really interesting on how to do it. So let me find this important block right here. Let me type it in here. One moment while I find that block. Right here, I'm gonna open this up. Here we go, districts, let's go with the southeast region. This block right here is gonna be super important. I'm gonna copy and paste it here. The reason why this, just this triangular piece is so important is because it's gonna be super helpful when you get into some angles that seem kind of weird. So notice here that you've got this nice sharp angle right here. Those square blocks are gonna have very difficult time fitting in that section. I would immediately grab this piece right here, whatever pack it's in, go ahead and favorite that immediately. That's gonna help you to fill in those corner pieces. So favorite that right away. After you favorited that piece, go to the larger blocks Okay, there's some larger blocks right here. Go ahead and favorite this as well. Now this is a particular kind of block. It's called a perimeter block. And it's called a perimeter block, and it's actually popular in most European cities, is, is that it creates a perimeter and then puts a small courtyard in the center. So you'll notice that all the structures are creating a perimeter. And then it creates an open air courtyard in the center. This is ideal for a lot of cities because at the bottom level, that first floor, it's gonna be all your commercial buildings, infrastructure, shops, while the upper floors are gonna be residential. So use these blocks. It's gonna be super helpful, 
okay? And then you're gonna build blocks around that. Let's stick with our scale at 50%, like I mentioned. And what I like to do is go into some sections and just start carving out some large pieces. And I would just set it to random for right now. So when you're putting it down, set it to random and just start putting it against the curved spaces. Against, I'm sorry, not the curve, but the straighter pieces like this, okay? Now that you've put in those larger blocks, these larger, more rectangular square blocks, now start filling in with smaller blocks. So you'll find out that there's these medium sized blocks. Start, go ahead and immediately favorite this block and then put it, set it to random if you want to, and just start filling in the spaces that you want to fill in. Okay? If you don't, if you run out of space, that's fine. Put them up against here. If it doesn't fit, just rotate through the different parts. Once you've put that together, then go ahead and use, a, there's a different block set. We're gonna do yellow blocks, yellow. There are all various types of blocks, okay? And you're gonna wanna use those blocks to your advantage, okay? Okay, there they are right here. Medium yellow clusters and yellow rows. Add both of these and favorite them immediately, okay? Absolutely first time chatter, DJ Scotty Evil. I agree. Sometimes though, it's nice to throw in a, a street that's not straight. Sometimes it's nice to break up the straight lines and throw in a curve, by the way. It's just to break up the monotony of straight lines. It's okay to throw in one maybe curved street just to break up those straight lines because it kind of looks nice, okay? Now, once you've put together these parts, now you can go ahead and grab in these medium clusters and you'll find out that they're kind of set up in a way to where they're not uh, perfectly straight. So you'll be able to fit in some random sizes if you want. So if I go in right here, you'll notice that this kind of fits in nicely right there. We can go in and put another block right here if we want, put another block right here, smaller pieces. There's also those yellow rows right here let's throw in some smaller rows right here let's take a look what we got here let's do that let's put in one more right here let's put it right here like this and then we'll take this other row and put it right here so start with largest medium small once you've filled in those sections let's go and throw in another medium sized piece by the way because this is a weird triangular piece let's find a piece that's going to work with that Perfect, that looks just fine like that. Once you've thrown in the medium pieces, then you're gonna throw in the smaller pieces. So just throw in some smaller, medium, or small buildings and just fill in the spaces that you want. This is, this is how easy block construction is. Start with the largest ones, largest pieces, then just work your way down. And what's really nice is that once you've created that part of the block, then you'll notice that some negative space opens up for you to create the rest of the roads. Before you do that, don't forget to throw in some shacks, okay? Look up shacks, and shacks are gonna be like outbuildings, okay? So let's throw down some shacks. Set it to just wrote to random, and just start placing them alongside your buildings. These are gonna represent maybe a tool shed, or an outhouse, or a gonna be uh, maybe a servant's quarters or some kind of maybe market stall or whatever. But these shacks are gonna be important to fill in the rest of the negative space. After you've done that, after you've constructed the general block shape, you can move on to the next step, which is gonna be texturing. And the way that I go about texturing is a couple things. One, let's go ahead and put in that road structure. When it comes to roads, if you want to show how important a road is, make the road texture at a higher opacity than a lower opacity. So if you want a road to be super important, then make it at 100% opacity. If you want the road to be just a small artery, drop the opacity down, set to FG, and I'll just go ahead and just do a couple passes in here and fill in the negative space like this. And this is gonna create your more unique block, super block structures, right? Notice that there's this tri nice, interesting triangular shape right here in the center of the block. It makes it look nice, doesn't it? So using, 
Using the block shapes and the negative space, you can fill in and create your smaller ancillary roads, okay? Once you've done that, go ahead and fill in your, your take your opacity to 100% and fill in those perimeter blocks with a nice green texture to represent a courtyard, okay? And you can even throw in a well inside of there if you want, throw in a well to represent that you know, this creates a kind of infrastructure part where there's water access. So if I just type in well, you can go ahead and put a well in your courthouse, inside of these courtyards as well to kind of represent that there's a water source there, okay? You can also throw in trees, bushes, gardens, grass, trees, whatever it is you want, okay? So it's very, very helpful to throw in those things. Once you've put all that together, then it's done. Now don't, that block only took about 10, 15 minutes to create. That's as simple as it is. Remember, start with your large super blocks, your square ones, then start with your medium odd shaped cluster blocks. There's, I believe they're called yellow medium clusters, I believe. And then start with, then use your yellow rows and then from there, use your individual buildings and then shacks, okay? You can add more details to a block by adding crates and barrels, but that's a lot of detail work, but it's up to you. If you're gonna add lots of detail work like barrels and crates, I totally recommend you put them in your infrastructure areas the most, okay? Because that's where you're gonna find a lot of goods and services, so of course you're gonna find crates and barrels in those areas, right? It only makes sense. Now that I've kind of made that block, I can just group it and just call it a block, okay? That's how simple block creation is. It's not as complex as you think. You don't need to be, con you don't need to feel, um, you don't need to feel intimidated at all. Just follow that process and then boom, each block will slowly be, not slowly, but you'll be able to work on each block. If you get bored, then just move into another stage of the process. Let's go ahead and do the last couple stages. Let's go ahead and create our farm section. As you would expect, outside of the city limits, there's going to be a lot of crops. The larger the city, the larger the more crops you're going to need, right? It only makes sense. So let's go ahead and put down our farmlands. And we're gonna go outside of our city limits and take a look. Wherever you're gonna have crops, you're gonna have farms. So you're gonna need a farmhouse. That's, you're not gonna find that in specialty buildings, but if you just type in farmhouse, a whole host of farmhouse shapes are gonna show up. Normally there'd be a lot more than just one farm, but I'm just putting one down for now to show you what the farm looks like. You're gonna notice that there's some barns right here with that farm. Remember the access to get to the farm, right? If you wanna to get to this farm, you go outside of the city limits, and then you go along the outside of the wall, around the surround, and then go down that road. Notice too that wherever you have farms, fields, crops, you're gonna need windmills or water mills, something to process that crop, process whatever that crop or staple is. So, and of course I've used a small hill composite stamp because, hey, the higher up a windmill is, the more it's gonna get wind, right? No trees, forests, mountains are gonna get in the way of that wind because you've made the windmills on a higher elevation, okay? So whenever you put down a windmill, just throw down a hill underneath it so that that way it can get the most access to that wind. And that way it's going to use the full potential of the wind to, to do whatever process, whatever it is your crop is, grains, vegetables, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. Okay. And one thing that I like to do with the crops is to rotate. Notice carefully that the grain of the texture is facing in different directions. This is easy. Just make sure that you set your crop scale to 50, just like the stamp scale is at 50, and then have it go in two different, several different directions. Notice that there are different directions of the crop. So that way it looks a little bit more organic, a little bit more realistic. And of course, I love to line my crops with bushes. And the way that I do that is just to click drag a little bit and then just single click a couple and then drag and then single click 
okay? So that way it doesn't look like a line of perfect bushes, okay? To give it a more organic or natural feel to it, start with a drag, couple clicks, drag, a couple clicks, okay? That's really how simple it is. The last thing I'm gonna be doing is, or the last couple things is gonna be doing shadows, and then we're gonna be um, using some filters, okay? All right, let's go ahead and zoom out, get a full feel for the city. And we're gonna go ahead and throw down shadows. Path tool for life, my friends. Path tool is gonna be magic, okay? I've just used a path where I've used a black path. I've blurred it, made sure the shadow was black. And then all I did was just drag that shadow, that path, along the edge here. This is what's referred to as ambient occlusion, okay? It's just to show height. If you notice how kind of flat it looks without a shadow next to it, it seems kind of flat. How do I determine height? Path tool, black with a blur, and just go ahead and place it along a cliff, and it will create this nice dark edge that will give it the illusion of depth, okay? Just save that for last. Okay, don't do that right away. Save your shadows and stuff for the last part of the process, okay? The last part is just choosing filters that you wanna pick. And filters are not complex. There's a couple that I just recommend right away. The first one is going to be clarity, which is gonna to help to make your light pop out, to make your colors pop out. It's gonna make the, the, the stamps a bit more, a bit more crisper. You're gonna throw in a, a watercolor texture, or I'm sorry, this is a vignette. I'll turn that vignette up so you can see. And what the vignette does is just create a little bit of a black shadow around the edge. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want the light or the focus to be on the city and not the surrounding area. So by using a vignette, I'm framing the city and putting the focus in the center. The next one is gonna be a spotlight. The spotlight, just puts a light in the center so that it highlights or puts a spotlight in the center parts of the city, making that city pop out. That last one is gonna be a color one and there's lots of different color filters. You can use cold warm, you could use parchment if you wanna give it a red desert look, maybe overcast if you want it to make it look like a rainy day, night scene if you want it to be a night scene, just be sure that you have it set to layer four and then put the lights on, on positive five. You can have a red sky to give it a rentish tint, winter to give it a more cool or warm. If you don't want a lot of color, you wanna make it black and white, grayscale, sepia, whatever you want. I'm gonna go with cold warm. I just like bringing out the cold and the warm colors with that cold warm filter. All right. Well, that's it. We just went seven minutes over. That wasn't too bad. Let's just quickly review process so that that way you remember how to go through it. Just remember when it, you're determining scale, it's all about population. If you want a large city, you're clearly going to want to drop the scale of the stamp to be smaller. If you're making a village, then you can bring the scale up. Make sure that you determine the population by deciding how many people per household. You can make it five per household, 50 per household. It's up to you. You're just setting the rules on how to set the scale, okay? It could be whatever number you want. You could say it's a 1,000 people per, per household. I don't care. It's totally up to you. So set the scale via population. You're going to set on set up the terrain. Remember to do an outline first so that that way you're not running blind when putting your terrain. Then you're going to put your city limits up. This is gonna to help to confine the space so you know the space that you're working in. After you've done that, you're gonna start doing all of your access. That means your thoroughfare. Your, thorough, your thoroughfare is your main road. Remember what the modern equivalent is, Broadway, Main Street, right? Then you're gonna create the arteries that branch off of the main thoroughway or carriageway. You're gonna make sure to construct your walls and there are gonna be different types of walls in the city. Notice that there's a wall, a curtain wall that protects the whole city. There's also a middle wall that protects the merchant district. And then you're gonna have all your staircases and bridges. Super duper important, okay? After you've done your access, don't forget your center pieces. Your center pieces are gonna be those large stamps 
that are going to make it so much easier to take up more space. So this is a centerpiece right here. This is a centerpiece right here. This block right here would be a centerpiece. This right here would be a centerpiece. This is a centerpiece. This is a centerpiece. Once you've made those centerpieces, it fills up all that space, making it so much easier to fill in a space because you've already filled it in with these larger centerpieces, okay? After you've done that, remember that old town, the way to make a city look like it's built through a crush, accretion or accretion is by creating the original town first. Remember that? This is why this part of the town is a perfect block because this is the original town that was constructed. Everything else was built around this, this old town. And old town again is going to be where your commercial center, all of your commerce or most of the commerce of the city is going to take place in that old town. Remember the modern equivalent would be something like downtown. Okay. After you've created the old town, you're going to want to create all the districts around it right? The gladiatorial, the merchant, everything. All those districts are going to go around there. Once you've created all the districts, then you have the most daunting task of all, of course, which is creating the blocks. But remember, we've taught you a process on how to make the blocks, largest to smallest, okay? And really, you'll spend about 15 to 20 minutes per block or large super block. Really, what these are are super blocks. These small, these large blocks, uh, remember perimeter blocks, are literally the city blocks, while this is going to be your super block. Okay, so start with small, your, your large blocks right here. Once you've created the larger blocks, start putting using smaller pieces, awkward shaped pieces like these, to fill in the negative space around it. And a good start is to start with making the perimeter of the super block first, okay? All right, well, hey, that is it. That's the process that we've gone through there. Um, the last part, of course, is that residential and then that farmland, okay? So really, making a city is not nearly as complex as you think. Just follow this process and it will be so much easier. Always think biggest areas, biggest stamps first, and then just move your way down. If you follow largest to smallest, that means when you get to the residential part, which is the most mundane part, you'll have less space to fill in because you've added in all the districts, the larger districts, the old town, the big centerpieces, and just build the residences around those large central pieces and districts, okay? So cities are not complex. They're actually quite easy. This city right here took me about five to six hours to put together. And that's being generous because really I had to redo much of the city due to a mistake that I made. So cities can be done in a smaller amount of time if you have the process, okay? Process is super important. All right, so next week, last stream of the month, we're gonna be creating world maps with the fantasy world style. And I'm gonna be showing you how to put together continents, how to understand continental drift, where to put mountain ranges, where to put um, archipelagos, how to put together your different regions, biomes, you name it, the whole shebang, okay? So I'm very, very excited for next week's stream, how to create world maps. All right, hey, I really hope that you found this useful. Please don't be afraid to tackle those cities. Cities are fun to make and they're actually really, really, really cool to actually kind of put together once you understand that process. All right, hey, thank you much. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. Please stay safe and healthy, and I will see you next week. Auf Wiedersehen, mon France.